And welcome to Dickinson's Real Deal. On this show, I help members of the public get the very best price for their antiques and valuables. I sit them down with one of our regular dealers. They're going to try and tempt you with a cash offer on the table today. How do you feel about that? I was expecting a little bit more, to be honest. A little bit more? Well, if I don't think that's enough money, I'll persuade you to place the same goods into an auction in the hope that you will get a little bit more money there. Today the show comes to you from Middlesbrough. Just look at that large crowd of people. They're determined to do business, either to walk away with cash or gamble and go to auction. Either way, they want the real deal. Trying to get the first deal of the day is a family double act, and they've got the cute factor. Will it work on Tim? Hello, Doug. Hi. And hello, Anna. Hello. You're not shy, are you? Yeah. Right. Now, is this your bracelet, or is it your mummy's? Mummy's. Mummy's. And do you like it? No. No? <laughs> do you like it, Doug? Not really. <laughs> And has your mummy had it a long time? So is it a family heirloom? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, do you know what it's made of, Edna? Gold. Gold, well done. <laughs> Let's just have a look at this. It's nine carat gold, and this is what they call rose gold. And it's going to be about 1910, and it's very heavy. So that means lots of money. So what I want you to do is, I want you to put that bracelet on there for me, please, Anna. That's it. That's it. And it weighs, we'll just get it right on, 32.6 grams of solid gold. How much do you think you might get for that? Don't know. You don't know? <laughs> no. Tell them the big price. <laughs> <laughs> So, if you got a lot of money today for your solid gold bracelet, Anna, what would you spend it on? Horse. Uh, horse. horse. Oof. I don't know. <laughs> I think that might be wishful thinking. <laughs> <laughs> so, right, let's talk money then. So, 50, 100, 150, 200, 250, 270, 280, 290. What do you think? I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> do you think that's a good offer? Or do you think I'm being a bit mean? Yeah. Kind of. Kind, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> Is that a no to my offer? <laughs> I'd say that's a no, yeah. I've done the research in it. Right. 300. 310, 320. Now that's a good offer. I think we need more, don't we, Anna? <laughs> it's a horse riding Oh, is it, right? <laughs> this is my last offer, Anna. £330. What do you think, Dad? I don't know. What do you think? Is that a good deal? It's got a lot of money. Deal. Yeah. We've got a deal. Fantastic. Mm. It's straight my hand now. That's the real deal. Thank you, Thank Doug. You very much. And Mum's there. Thank <laughs> you, Mum. You could have joined us. <laughs> Shy isn't she, your Mum? Now what I want you to do now is to put that in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Thank you very much. You've been a star. <laughs> Tim, you softy. Now, our next seller is hoping Helen will make an offer for this tuneful job that's music to his ears. Now, I want you to tell me all about this fascinating jug you've brought in today. This fascinating jug, I believe, is a Crown Devon musical 
which was... Plays a tune. It plays a, well, plays a very nice tune. Yes. Uh, was given to me by my mother-in-law back in the early 90s, uh -huh. along with a few other items, and it's been sat on the fireplace ever since. So you've had some fun over the years playing the tune, have you? Yeah. Well, it's a very famous tune. It's Old Lang Syne, and written by... Robbie Burns. That's right. It's a nice little jug, and, of course, being a novelty jug, when you give it a little turn, it plays a little tune. So, and when you put it down, of course, it stops. I would say round about 1940s, I would think. It's got rather nice thistles on it, so maybe you brought it to the right woman, I don't know. And these guys here, this is Tam O'Shanter and Suter Johnny. So, Mike, how much do you want for your jug? Well, I was hoping to give the money to my daughter, because she leaves school in the uh -huh. next month or so, so she'll be becoming a poor student, so... So any, any little helps? Yes, uh, so whatever I can get, really. That's £20. £25, £30. How do you feel about that? I was expecting a little bit more, to be honest. A little bit more? Well... How about £35, Mike? It's not going to go a long way for a poor student, is it? It certainly isn't, but then it's maybe not a terribly valuable item. <laughs> Here's David to give you some advice. As soon as I saw that this morning, I thought... I know who that's going to go to. The Rabbi Burns jug. <laughs> she would get a fantastic price for that, you know. Can you imagine on Burns Day, how much is the jug? The jug? It's very rare. <laughs> OK, it's worth another ten. Musical? <laughs> as well? It's all singing, all dancing. <laughs> Burns night. <laughs> la, da, la, la, da, 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 da. Oh dear, it's made it worth 60 quid now. <laughs> well, I'm not going to put 60 pound down, but how about if I take that away and put 40 pound down? You're not putting another five? Just for a poor student? If I put the other fiver down, we've got a deal, have we? We've got a deal, Helen. There's your fiver. Shake my hand, we have a deal. <laughs> Helen seems to have paid a good price for the jug. Find out later if she makes a profit. Next is Joe into designer labels. Well, this timepiece has a name to conjure with. How do you come to own a gentleman's Rolex watch from the 30s? Well, I always thought it was my husband's for his 21st, but it goes back to the 30s, so I think it was his uncle's originally. So what's prompted you to bring it along here today? Well. I have three grandsons and I wouldn't know who to give it to, you know, that's why. So I just thought, well, if I get the money for it, I'll just share that between them. Now, I have to say I quite like Rolex watches. OK. Mm -hmm. But this one has a bit too many problems for me. Oh, Sorry. Mm -hmm. mm. It's had a very hard life, hasn't it? It's back plate is dinted. Its face is quite foxed. Yeah. And um, you struggle to restore them nicely. Mm -hmm. The glass is very scratched. Right. And the, for some reason, the winder refuses to re-engage. Yes, I think uh, that's Bernard had that trouble with it, yes. And it's just one of those things. If it, if something's got one thing wrong with it, you think, oh, I can give that a go. Mm. But this kind of seems to be troubled. If you didn't have Rolex on it, yes. it would have no value at all, really. It's, right. It is the magic word of Rolex. Yeah, I know, I know that, yes, yeah. So, how about £50? Pounds? Oh, no. Well, do you know, I have a feeling that I don't really want to own it that much. I do think, to be quite honest, you'd do better at auction than right. with me. Right, OK, yes. Uh, yeah. You know, if I have to give you good advice, that would be it. Yeah, right. Well, if that's your final offer, I'll take it to auction. Yeah, that is my final offer. Yes, OK, then. OK, Thank well, you. I wish you luck. Thank you very much. Well, thanks very much Thank for bringing you. it in. Thank you. Are we all done, ladies? Five. So not a great offer from Joe. Let's see if it clocks up some bids under the gavel of auctioneer Giles Hodges. 168. 
you sat down with Joe Brayshaw. She said, I'll give you 50 quid. <laughs> you said, no, you won't. I'm going, I'm going with the Duke to auction. Here we are. Yes. 150 to 200 pounds is the estimation, and there is a reserve of 150 pounds. Yes. Tick tock. Are we going to sell it? What do you think? I hope so. Okay, it's coming up now. <laughs> 100 B, 120, 140. At 140, it's with me on commission. I've got two bids, 160. We're just past the reserve now of 150. We're at 180, 200. At 200 pound for the last time. Two, 220, back in. At 220 pound. Two, 240. 240. 240 pound, and we're away at 240. The gavel has gone down at £240. What's your first reaction? Well, uh, brilliant. <laughs> Very good. Uh, take away the commission. That leaves you with £216. Yes. You said no to Joe Brayshaw at a £50 offer. Yes. Yes. Good job you did, because yes. now you're going home with a real deal of £216. Tick tock. Coming up, this little piggy has come to market, and all's well. The little pig. He's just gorgeous. Until... What did your sister do to it? Because it's horrible. Is this a deal-breaker? Find out in a few moments. <laughs> Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal from Middlesbrough. Now, is Janice looking for something to light up her life? Well, our next seller has two. And how do you come to own these silver candlesticks? I bought them from a charity shop. Oh, have you had them long? About 18 months. About 18 months. I never find things in charity shops. <laughs> oh, goodness. And what are you going to do with the money if you do sell them today? Um, I've got a speeding fine to pay. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a big one? £75. Oh, my goodness. Well, we'll see what we can do then. Let's have a look at them. And uh, they're silver. If you can see, they're hallmarked at the front. 1920 is the hallmark. They are quite light, because mm. whilst they are solid silver, they will have been filled inside. Yeah. However, these candlesticks have had a life. Both of them have got damage. There's dents here and on the corner. They've certainly been used. I'll see what I can do anyway. Um, let's have a think. Now, don't get excited. <laughs> <laughs> We'll start with twenty pounds. No. 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 I'll put I'll put another ten on, but that I'm afraid is going to be my final offer. There is an awful lot of um, damage to them. Okay. So what would you like to do? I think I'll take them to auction. You'd like to take them to auction? Okay. Can you just tell me how much did you pay for them at the charity shop? I actually paid £25 for them. £25 yeah. for them. Mm. Oh, I feel awful now. <laughs> okay. But good luck at auction. Thank you. Thank you. Five, five. So Carmel is hoping for a bigger profit over at the auction. Five. Now, Carmel, on the dealer's day, you brought along two silver candlesticks, Chester 1920, paid £25. You've decided you want to pass them on now? Yes. OK, you turn down 30, they're here with a £60 reserve. Are they going to make more than £60? I think so. Let's find out. They're coming up now. And I'm bid 60 to start them. Five anybody. At £60. £60. Oh, you paid £25. At £75. Back of the room. Anybody on the net? At £75. Are we all done at £75? The gavel has gone down at £75. We've got to take off £7.50. Uh, that makes it something like £67.50 to come back to you. You paid £25. £67.50 you're getting back. Are you happy? Yes, very happy. She's very happy. That's the real deal. Ah, oh, just short of that speeding fine, Carmel. And there are comic capers back in the dealer's den with this print. Tim, meet Billy. So you've brought along today this pen and ink sketch of Billy Bunter. Yeah, that's now, right, yeah. Tell me what the fascination is with Billy Bunter. Um, it's just 
brought childhood memories back. One, one, probably one of the first books I read. I actually started by you know collecting the books and. Uh, I got really fascinated with it all and got carried away, probably. But and, and have you read them all? Yeah. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is by the man who illustrates the books then, isn't it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's C.H. Chapman. C.H. Chapman. Illustrated. Uh, but he signed it there, Yorick, so is that is like a pen name for that, him? That's a pen name. He signed it quite a few drawings. Yeah. It's Yorick, yeah. And how, how did you acquire that drawing then? I, I, I bought it pri privately. I was um, buying stuff in internet auctions. Yeah, having read all the books, have you seen that illustration in any of the books? I've never seen that that one. Right. Um, the books what I've read were um, from 1947 through to 65. Yeah. But the magnet was started out in 1908, right. uh, and that's where he first first appeared in the magnet in 1908, and that ran from 1908 through to the. Second World I War. mean, looking at the style of sort of this and that, it looks quite 1940s. That you know, how yeah. that blaze is painted and that. Um, very, very difficult thing to price. Yeah, yeah. It is really tricky. Um, I don't know. I might be completely wrong here. Can only try Tim. I can only try. Yeah, fifty pounds. No. 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 It's a bit, bit short. A bit short. Sixty pounds. <laughs> No, Tim. No. no. Seventy pounds. No. Eighty pounds. <laughs> no, Tim. No. no. Do I ever take these away and put hundred and ten pounds? No, you're still a bit short. Am I? Yeah. I think I'm going to stick at 110 because I'm just, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> that's fine. I think you're probably going to have to take it to auction then, Barry. Yeah, that's fine. Is that OK? Have you been to auction before? No, I've never been to the auction before. Oh, well, it's a whole new experience. Lots of billy bunters there, <laughs> you know, and there'll be bids flying around. So good luck. Thanks, Thanks very, very much, much for bringing Thank it you. along. So will the bidders get a kick out of this print in the auction room? It's entitled, Poor Billy completely lost his temper. What did you pay for it? I paid £250 for it. You paid quite a strong price for that. You're going to gamble, you've sent it to the auction with a £150 reserve. You realise that's still a substantial loss. Why are you doing this? My, my wife seen that the show was in, in the area, so I brought her along to the show. That, that tells a story. Your wife saw the show was, was in the area and said, Barry, get that Billy Bunter picture down to the show. Yeah, that's right. Arm up me back and everything. Arm up your back, now you're in trouble. OK, let's see what happens. Is it going to sell? It may be a close-run thing. He might be able to take it home without it being sold. Well, let's see what happens. Bit of interest. I'm bid 50 to start it. Add 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Add 100 pounds. Still short, 100 pounds. Add 100 pounds. Tell anybody now. Barry's having a, a quiet breathe here. He's thinking, thank goodness. Add 100 pounds for the last time. At 100. OK, it didn't sell. So you're able to take it home. What's your wife called? Jeanette. Jeanette? It didn't sell, though. So Barry wants to bring the Billy Bunter picture home. On the day, it didn't sell, but this has turned out to be a really good deal. There's still a healthy crowd in the dealer's den. And next in the market for the real deal is Brenda and this little piggy. And this is your paper now. Well, no, I think... No, it's my sister's. It's your sister's. Uh, so why is your sister parting with it? Well, it's just in the drawer. Love this. Yeah. I'm very sure I know what it is, but... It's, um, yeah, it's exactly as I thought. Sampson Morden, Chester Hallmark, 1908-1909. It's a bookmark. Mm -hmm. What did your sister do to it? Because it's horrible. Well, I don't know, because she goes... Uh, when my auntie died, it belonged to my auntie. And she got it when my auntie died. It does need a bit of work. It needs that tidying up. It does, yeah. But the little pig, yeah. he's just gorgeous. He's going to have to be repaired. Yeah. And he's going to have to be properly cleaned. Yeah. But he's 
pedigree is perfect. We'll start with £50, £100, £120. That's good offer that. <laughs> Shall I just go to where I'm going to go? A little bit more. <laughs> £140. Can't you make £150? Mm. It's going to cost me a tenner or so to get him fixed. So, no, I think I'll stick with my £140. I think that's a good offer. Can't you make it about £150? You've got a deal. Look, OK. I want to own this little fella, yeah. so I'll take those off, put that on. And then do we have a deal, Brenda? Yes, definitely. Excellent. I shake my hand. Thank, Thank you very much. much. Thanks for coming in. Coming up, how to get a Donald Campbell signed picture. And was your uncle involved in? in no, he was just was on it. He was just on a coach trip on that day at the hotel. He just happened to be yeah. there. Yeah. So it's about right time, right place. <laughs> Will it be a profitable encounter? Find out after the break. Where have you been? Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. <laughs> Our dealers have been busy buying and there's still plenty coming through the door. Including this next item awarded for a tour of duty. Now you've brought a medal in. Yep. So you've been in Northern Ireland. I have. I was uh, done three tours of Northern Ireland. Wow. In the 70, 1974 to 1975, or 1976, I think. So was that in peacekeeping? That was the peacekeeping. Peacekeeping, uh, yeah. Patrol on the streets and things like that. Because that must have been at the height of all, all the troubles in that in Northern it Ireland. It was in the 70s, yeah. 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 Right, so... <laughs> It's a difficult thing, really, to put a value on it, isn't it? Because it's sort of six years of your life, that, isn't it, really? Yeah, yeah, it's six years of my life. But it's in the 70s, like I say, and we're in the 2000s now, so I've moved on up to the future, not the past. To anymore. the past, right. Um, I, I mean, I do buy medals, but I'm not a medal expert, but I believe they made quite a few of these. Yeah. 130,000. 130,000. <laughs> yeah, so... Um, there's a few kicking around then, and I have had these before, actually. Yeah. Right, I'll get a bit of money out and see what we could do. <laughs> £50. No more than 50 So £50 not going to buy it? No. No. What about £60, Thomas? Do a bit more? I don't think I want to pay any more than that for it because I'm just sort of like trying to remember in the back of my mind yeah. what I got for the last one that I had, and I think it was somewhere in that sort of that, that figure, yeah, yeah. yeah. So is that your final offer? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is, Thomas. Right, I'll take that. You're going to take it. Yes, I'm going to take it. You sure? Yes. Well, thank you very much for bringing right. it along. Okay, I'm right. <laughs> And our next seller is also keen to let go of the past in the shape of this family piece. Well, this is a rather grand vase you've got, Madeline. And where did you get this vase? It's been in the family for a lot of years, with grandmothers and uh, mothers or fathers, yeah. And you don't know where your granny got no, it from? No, not at Did all. anyone go to China in your family? I don't know, they might have done. They may yeah, have done. Yeah, mm. I don't know. Do you know what this vase is? Have you any idea? I think it's perfume reverse. Mm -hmm. Probably late 19th century. It's nicely decorated, but I particularly like the shape of this vase. Yeah, the shape is unusual. As you say, it's probably used for perfume, like pop incense. Period, isn't it? Yeah. And this looks like the original lid. Mm, it says right. Now, when we turn this vase upside down, there's a six character letters on the bottom. Yes. I think that is the late 19th century Qing dynasty, yeah. which was the last Chinese dynasty. Mm. So do you know how much it's worth? Have I you don't, got an I idea? Got, I haven't got a clue Not at all. a clue? Not a clue. You'll know when I put money down, you'll be able to tell me when to stop, will you? I hope so, yeah. <laughs> 50, 100, 150, 200 pounds, Madeline. No. No, no, no. I thought you didn't know where to go. I think maybe you do. 
Well, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't got much of an idea, but I think they're all coming back into the Chinese market, isn't it? £200. Let me put a little bit more down. £250. £300, Madeline. No. No? no. £350, Madeline. Am I interesting you yet? No. No? Let me make it 370 Let me make it 390 Just to sweeten the pot a little bit. You're not sure, are you? Would you like oh, some no. advice? Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Fabulous. What we've got here is a Chinese vase, which is probably late 19th century, early 20th. What we have here, though, is a beautiful vase. This has a very good chance of performing well in an auction. There's nothing wrong with the offer that's there, but because the situation in the sale room is so strong, I'm going to say, take your chances in the sale room. It may fall down, we may not get it on the day, but you might get one heck of a surprise. Let me have another chance at this. Uh, and that's one, two, three, 350. 400, 450, 500. My secret weapon. 600 pounds. 640. And that's cash. But you have got a chance. The choice is going to be yours. But don't, don't cry if you, if you come out with less. But anyway, the choice is yours now, Madeline. Go to auction. Definitely. Going to go to auction. Well, I definitely. hope it does sensationally okay. well. I, don't <laughs> I hope. It, I hope it brings you what you dream about. Yeah, it'd be lovely. But you know, always be a little bit cautious. Oh yeah, definitely. Thank okay. You very much. Good luck yeah. with it. So Madeline is prepared to risk tears and take David's advice and head to auction. Is it a smart move? How lucky are you feeling now? Very lucky, you don't know why. <laughs> OK. I think there's every possibility that it could go a little bit more, but the reserve you have set is £800. Yeah, with discretion. Absolutely. Now, you've said with discretion, so that probably means about 10%, so somewhere around 700 Yeah. We're going to find out if the gamble pays off. And I'm straight in at 400 to start it, at 400, for 20, for 40, for 60. It's creeping 500, up. 500. £500. Are you all done? And £500 for the last time at £500. OK, £500. It didn't sell, didn't make the reserve. Now then, what are you thinking now, Madeleine? You turned down 640 quid. OK. Still, it's been experience. Madeleine says she's devastated. It's been an experience, but that, that, that tells you something. Just because a dealer on our programme offers 640 does not guarantee that a dealer or a private collector here in the sale room will pay the same. Sometimes they will pay more, but on this occasion, they didn't. The gamble didn't pay off. The real deal was with Helen on our dealer's day, £640. Good on you, Helen, but we're a little bit disappointed. Never mind. Never mind. Next up, a photograph of a legendary land and water speed record breaker. And it's really caught the attention of David and auctioneer Giles Hodges. Um, you've brought a photo in? Yeah. Um, I recognise that it's Donald Campbell. That's right, yeah. And I know it's Ullswater, because I recognise that, because yeah. I know Ullswater well. Yeah. Um, can you explain a bit about it and all the signatures and...? Yeah, it's a picture of when Donald Campbell, 1955, broke the water speed record on Lake Hulls Water. Right. Um, the signatures are Donald Campbell, cell, and the rest of the team, mechanics and everybody. Um, it was got by my uncle at the local hotel at the dinner party that celebrated when he broke the, the record. And that would be at the Glen Ridding Hotel? That's right, yeah. And was your uncle involved in...? in no, he was, just, was, on, he was he... just on a coach trip on that day just, at the hotel. He just happened to be yeah, there? Yeah, and he just happened to... Wangle his way in and get asked them for all the, yeah, ask them for all the, the signatures and he luckily he got them. 
and why have you come here with it today? Well, it's it's just locked away in a brown envelope. I dare put it out. I don't want to put it on shore. Right. This was in 1955. Yeah. Was this actually the, the time when he broke the record? Yes. This yeah. is when he actually broke the record? Yeah. And it was, what, in the 60s, wasn't it, when he was killed? 67, yeah. On Coniston? On Coniston. And Coniston, they suspect yeah. there was a bird on the water or something, mm, don't they? Yeah. That, yeah. that flipped. Flipped and hit the screen. Yeah. 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 Giles, over the years, and even on this programme, we've had several images, several photographs, with Donald Campbell, Bluebird, but this seems to me to be an absolute corker. You can clearly see it's Donald Campbell sat within Bluebird. Yeah, it's a nice one. I mean, as I said, you've got a nice angle of the photograph. He's in the boat. He's obviously coming into dock. Just a different picture, different angle. It's a tricky thing to value, but where are you going to be on this? Well, I sold a lot smaller one about three or four years ago um, for around about the £250 mark. But I think this one's got the edge because of the extra signatures because of the angle of the photograph with the fact that he's in the boat, four to six hundred, five to six, somewhere around that bracket. It's not that easy to value. OK, but what's Joe going to put on the table? Let's see what she puts down. Make you an offer. You're not going to want to. <laughs> uh, 100, 200, 300, 400 pounds. I couldn't let it go for 400. <laughs> well, it's very interesting, this. I mean, I've seen one or two images of Donald Campbell. Now, this one is on Oldswater, and uh, I think that's a great picture. Now, the independent values on the auctioneers, they vary. They go five to seven, six to eight. There's every chance this could fly in auction, really. This could get some real speed going. So I'm going to say, nice offer, Joe, but I think we'll take our chances at auction. You've listened to what Mr D says. Yeah, I think I'll have to take it to auction. I think you have to take it to auction. Thank yeah. you very much for bringing Thanks it in. It's been a okay. pleasure to see it. Thanks it really has. Enjoyed yeah, it. Great. So we're all agreed, it's off to auction. How will the bidders react to this fascinating piece of history? Oh, I'll tell you what, <laughs> talk about a speed record. And also coming up after the break, a weighty collection. Well, they are beautiful works of art. We've got David and Goliath, Creation of Eve. Will this picturesque currency get a good exchange rate? Find out after the break. Welcome back to Dickinson's Real Deal. I've got Ian here with me. Now, on the dealer's day, Ian, you sat down with one of our dealers, Joe. She said, why, hey, man, I'll give you 400 quid for that. That's right. What did you say? Not today. <laughs> OK. You said not today, and I think you've done the right thing there. It's here now, it's about to go, reserve is 600. Are we going to break the record? <laughs> Are we going to get it here? What do you think? I hope so. <laughs> we hope so. I feel optimistic. I think we're going to get a decent price for this photograph. Here it is. I've got two commission bids and 300 starts me. A low start, 300. 340. 360, 380, 400, 420. It's past 40, the offer in, on the deal stage. 460, 480. It's a 480. Internet 480 came in and stopped. At 480 pound. One more for the net. 500. 500, 500 on the internet just in time. <laughs> at 520, 540, yes or no. At 520 pound. 540, 560. Internet's taking their time to reply on this. £560, we're almost there. 580 it's on the internet. I'm gonna sell it. It's gonna sell it. We're okay there? That's £20 we're allowing on it. Anybody in the room, we're all done. It's on the internet at 580. Oof, I tell you what, talk about a speed record. They were slow on the internet, making their mind up. £580, we've got 10% to come off that. That leaves £522. For your signed photograph. That was the real deal. Yep. Speedy enough for you? Yeah. <laughs> it had me sweating, I'll tell you. 522, real deal. Now, all that glisters is not gold. It could be silver. And this volume contains an impressive collection. And you've brought in for me a collection of Franklin Mint medals. Yeah, that's right. That's right. 
And how do you come to own them? They used to belong to my dad. Your dad? Yeah. Okay. These are all scenes from the Sistine Chapel in yeah. Rome. There's some incredibly detailed pieces. The workmanship in these is fantastic. Um, we've got the gathering of the waves, Noah's sacrifice. I mean, they are beautiful works of art. We've got David and Goliath, the creation of Eve. There's some beautiful pieces. And how long do you think it took your dad to collect them? I think it was a couple of years. A couple of years, yeah. yeah. And he'd have got them through the post every few yeah, weeks or so. Out, yeah. I remember him sitting on the night doing them with his little gloves on and put them in the pouches and stuff. Yeah. yeah. The original gloves. Original. And these are the instructions for putting them in. Yeah. Now there is a market for these, but unfortunately um, they don't keep the value that your father would have. You know, he'd probably paid quite a lot for them, yeah. I'd imagine. So what I'll do is I'll get some money out on the table okay. and we'll see what you want to do. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, 600, 700, 800. You're thinking a bit more. You're thinking a bit more. Yeah. I will go a bit more. Go one, two, three, four, five. That's 900. And I'll go 50. 950. What would you like to do, Tracy? Oh, here's David. Now, we've got a collection here, uh, an, an amazingly large collection, which was put together by your father. Yeah. Now, I'm sure when your father bought these as individual items, he probably thought he was investing for the future in, in a collection of limited edition items. The word today is, if this goes to the auction, if it goes to a dealer, sadly, they will not necessarily be buying this for the works of art, for some of these rather intricately cast uh, medals or coins. They will be buying them for the sheer value of the silver or gold. In this case, it's silver. In scrap alone, there is £1,350 worth of silver there. Yeah. Now you've got 950 there. We need to persuade our dealer, please, dealer, please, dealer, please, can we have some more money so that Father's collection doesn't have to go to the auction? Please, dealer. <laughs> <laughs> right, okie doke. Um, I will put a bit more on. We take that 10 off. 60, 80. I'll make it a straight thousand. How far away are we? Nearly there. Nearly there. Yeah. Okay. So if I put another twenty pounds down, have we got a deal? Yeah. Twenty yeah. pounds? Yeah. Thank Brilliant. you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. So Tracy held out for an offer she's happy with. Now what offers have our dealers accepted? Helen broke even with the musical jug and Tim managed to get 360 for the gold bracelet. Shake my hand now, that's the real deal. But he's yet to sell that medal. The little piggy proved lucky for Jo as she sold the silver letter opener for £210. And Janice got an impressive £1,220 for the Franklin Mint Silver Collection. It's been an exciting day here in the sale room. There really has been a lot of action, just the way we like it. Lots of bidding and lots of buying. Don't forget to join me, David Dickinson, next time for Dickinson's Real Deal. Bye for now.